had to pull out orders. The neat rows of children formed and filed into the building. Lloyd, Harvey and Dinah stood awkwardly, not looking at each other, until the whole playground was empty and they were alone gazing up at the prefect, who stood like a row of iron statues. Jeff stared down at them and chanted, It is forbidden to waste time by playing in the playground. It is forbidden, Rose went on, to make a mess of your school uniform. You must be punished, Sarah said. In a suitable manner, finished off Simon, smiling slightly. Drawing together, the prefect whispered for a moment, and then Rose turned to them again. Go inside, she rapped out. Take off your hats and coats and gloves, then come back here. As they walked towards the cloakroom, Dinah whispered to Lloyd, What will happen? What will they do? I don't know, he said sourly. But whatever it is, it'll be all your fault. I wish you'd never come. No, it's my fault, Harvey said in a miserable voice. I threw the snowballs, and whatever they do, it'll be terrible. When they came out of the door again, four of the prefects had gone. Rose was standing, looking out over the playground, with a pleased smile on her face, and Jeff was by her side holding three long-handled brooms. Now, he said in a silky voice, you're very lucky. we decided to be kind to you. Lloyd and Harvey looked uneasily at each other. Yes, Rose's smile broadened. Because you're so fond of playing with the snow, we're going to let you have some more of, some more of it. Jeff held out the brooms. You will each take one of these, and you will sweep all the snow from the playground into a heap. Then, he looked at Rose with a grin, you will make the whole sneak, the whole heap into a pile of snowballs. For a second, Harvey looked perplexed, but Lloyd burst out, Are you going to let us put on our coats and things? Rose went on smiling, Certainly not. But you can't do that. Harvey's got a weak chest. He could be ill. He... Silence! Suppose we say no? Asked Dinah in a stiff voice. Rose and Jeff looked at her as if she had said something unbelievably stupid. Together they chanted, The prefects are the voice of the headmaster. They must be obeyed. <laughs> Then Jeff thrust the brooms at them. Get sweeping! Resigned, Lloyd and Harvey trailed off down the steps, dragging their brooms after them. Dinah lingered rebelliously for a second or two, then joined them at the far end of the playground. Let's do it as quickly as we can, she said. Perhaps that'll keep us warm. Huh? No. Huh! Lloyd snorted. Don't know why you're so cheerful. None of this would have happened if you hadn't started talking about snowball fights. He banged his broom crossly into the snow and began to sweep, pushing it into a great white mound in front of him. For the first ten minutes or so, it was not too bad. The exercise kept them fairly warm. But then the wind started to blow, scattering the snow as they swept it and freezing their fingers. I'm so cold, Harvey said plaintively. And we're only halfway across. We'll never get it all swept. Don't give up yet, Lloyd said grimly. This is the easy part. Just you wait until we start on the snowballs. Dinah shuddered at the thought as the wind whipped through her thin school shirt. Then she found that she could not stop shivering. Her whole body was shaking, and her teeth were chattering. 
together uncontrollably. She put down her broom for a moment to clap her arms around herself for a bit of warmth. Instantly, from the building behind them, came an irate tapping. Turning, she saw Rose gesturing furiously at her through the window. She picked up her broom again and began to sweep harder, trying to ignore the shaking. At last the snow was piled into a single heap almost as tall as Harvey. The three of them laid their brooms down at one side and stared at it. I don't think I can do it, Harvey said woefully. My hands are hurting. Lloyd watched him anxiously. His face had a bluish tinge and he was starting to breathe wheezily. Why don't you stop? Dinah said. Tell them you won't do it. I don't suppose the headmaster would really be angry. He must be... Then her teeth rattled together so hard that she could not go on speaking. Lloyd and Harvey said nothing, just looked at her as though she was completely idiotic and bent down to start making snowballs. Oh, all right, she said crossly. Be like that. I bet I can make snowballs faster than you. As soon as she touched the snow, she knew that it was going to be a nightmare. Her hands were already painfully cold, but at least they had been dry up to now. The snow made them wet, and the cold wind whipping across stung them, so that they felt almost as if they were burning. Anxiously, she wondered how long it would take before she got frostbite, and her fingers started to turn black and drop off. It would not have been quite so bad if Lloyd and Harvey had been sympathetic, but neither of them spoke to her. Lloyd was making snowballs in a frenzy, trying to get through the huge heap as quickly as possible. If he looked at her at all, was only to pull a disgusted face. It was only to pull a disgusted face and Harvey had started to cry. Without stopping words, he was sobbing with pain, his face growing red and raw, and now, as the wind scoured the tears from his round cheek, I can't, murmured a voice in Dinah's head, I can't, I can't, I can't. But all the time, mechanically, she went on making snowballs, until it seemed that she would never stop as if she would go on until the end of the world, stooping, seizing a handful of snow, squashing it together in her agonised hands, and dropping it onto the pile. They seemed to have been there for about a hundred years when Lloyd said suddenly, Two or three more each and we've finished, glancing sideways at his watch. Dinah saw that it was not yet twelve o'clock. Gritting her teeth, she scrunched together her last couple of handfuls of snow and flung them triumphantly on top of the pile. That's it. We've finished. Let's go inside and get warm. Not yet, Lloyd said bitterly. Look, they're coming to inspect us. Sure enough, the prefect, all six of them, were trooping down the steps from the school, marching in perfect time. They walked across the playground and stood in a half circle around Lloyd, Harvey and Dinah. Not a very tidy heap of snowballs, Rose said grudgingly. She looked sideways at Jeff and his spotty face suddenly creased into a leering smile. But you must have enjoyed yourselves, he said softly, since you're so fond of snow. Do you think they've had enough snow yet, Rose? She leered back at him. Surely not. Not when they like it so much.
Without warning, the line of prefects surge forwards in unison, their hands outstretched. Lloyd Harvey and Dinah were each seized by two prefects. who spun them around and knocked them forwards, face down in the snow. As Dinah's face crashed down into the hard, bald snow, the first feeling was one of despair. Snow slammed up her nose, into her eyes and all down her front, soaking her clothes. It seemed like the last straw, and she nearly burst into tears, but by the time she stood up she was furious, furious and incredulous. Leaping to her feet, she began to yell at the prefect. That's too much! You can't do that! I shall go and tell the headmaster, he'll punish you! You've got no right to treat us like that. Very softly, Jeff started to laugh and rose, shaking with merriment. Pointed a finger towards the school where the window of the headmaster's office faced them. At the window was a pale face, its eyes hidden behind dark glasses. It stared out over the playground, apparently without expression. So he knows, does he? said Dinah quietly, her mouth set stubbornly. Well, I'm not scared of him, even if the rest of you are. I shall go and tell him just what I... Think of him for letting something like this happen to a boy as little as Harvey, her feet sounding loud on the clear tarmac. She stamped across the playground and into the school, carried along by the force of her old her cold rage without stopping to consider what she was doing she marched up to the door of the headmaster's office and hammered on it with both fists nothing happened crossly she caught at the handle and rattled it and rattled it but the door was locked and so heavy that it hardly moved i know you're in there she shouted I saw you at the window, and I think it's disgusting. Fancy letting the prefect bully a little boy like Harvey. It might take him, it might make him ill. You, you're inhuman. She paused. No sound came through but from behind the door, and for a second she felt completely helpless. Then, at last, her brain began to work. She smiled triumphantly and went on speaking in a quieter voice. Anyway, you won't get away with this. Even headmasters aren't allowed to do things like that. When we get home, we'll all tell Mr. and Mrs. Hunter, and there'll be a scandal. You'll be prosecuted. There was still no sound, but she did not care now that she had worked out what to do next. Her fingers were starting to hurt as the warmth of the building reached them. With a final thump on the door, she began to run down the corridor towards the cloakroom. If only she could wash them in the, in warm water, she would feel better. And if there was something hot for lunch, even Harvey might be all right. She was making so much noise that she did not hear the office door open behind her. She did not look over her shoulder and see the pale face which stared after her. If she had, she would have been puzzled because the face was smiling. So, Miss Clever Glass, murmured the headmaster, you have a soft spot for Harvey Hunter, have you? You are ready you're ready to protect him? Well that might come in very useful. Yes indeed. I must think about that. His smile broadened. After this afternoon's assembly Yeah, after this afternoon's assembly. And as he turned away, he laughed softly and evilly. Lloyd burst in through the back door of the kitchen a hundred yards ahead of Harvey and Dinah. Mum! Mum! Where are you? 
Mrs. Hunter emerged from the hall. Goodness me, what a fuss! The end of the world at last. I should think. Whatever is the matter? It's what happened at school today, Lloyd slumped down into a chair. It was simply terrible. Mrs. Hunter suddenly stopped looking sympathetic. Now, Lloyd, I hope this isn't going to be another one of your silly stories. I know what trouble we've had in the past with your lies. It's different this time, Lloyd said triumphantly. Dinah will tell you that it's true. And you'll believe her, won't you? She turned around and waved a hand at Harvey and Dinah, who were coming through the door. Well, Dinah certainly looks calmer than you do, Mrs. Hunter said. But she knows too, Lloyd yelled. She'll tell you. Don't shout, dear. Why don't you ask her? Yes, said Harvey excitedly. Ask Dinah what happened at school today. You'll believe her, Lloyd said bitterly. Dinah was frowning looking at the three of them in bewilderment. Well, dear, Mrs. Hunter said gently, tell me, what happened at school today? In a perfectly calm, even voice, Dinah said, at school today, Harvey made snowballs and we all had a snowball fight. It was super. The headmaster made sure we all dressed up warmly in our hats and coats and gloves. And he gave us drinks of hot black currant when we came inside. What? Lloyd stared at her. Harvey looked appalled. Dinah! Mrs. Hunter smiled comfortably. It all sounds very nice. But you don't understand, Lloyd exploded. It's not true. It wasn't like that at all. We... Be quiet! All at once, Mrs. Hunter was very angry. It's all the same, Lloyd. You and Harvey come back from school with silly, unbelievable stories. And whenever I ask any of the other children I find, it's all lies. I'm not going to make a fool of myself by complaining again. I don't think it's funny, it, even, even if you do. It's not meant to be funny, Lloyd glared at Dinah. She knows. She's a filthy, foul traitor. She's one. Of, she's the one who's telling lies. Lies. That's enough. Mrs. Hunter banged her hand on the table. Don't blame Dinah for not wanting to join in with your silly games. You've been unpleasant to her ever since she came. I won't have it. This is her home now, as well as yours. And you'll just have to get used to it. But not another word. It doesn't matter, Al, Harvey said miserably. We ought to have known it would be like this. It's always like this. Two hundred people to say we're lying. Whatever we say, we can't do anything about it. We can refuse to speak to traitors, Lloyd said hotly. Come on, H, let's go to the playroom. There's a bad smell in this kitchen. He stamped out. Harvey stood in the doorway for a moment, looking at Dinah. How could you? He said reproachfully. When you know what it was like. 